chapter X has four. I don't know why I thought this would be bigger, but it's maybe those four. Maybe those four questions are actually very large. Anyway, so this is a column matching questions. First question: A circular body of mass m radius r initially spinning about its center of mass omega naught is gently placed on a rough horizontal surface. Okay, cool. The uh, the what the moment of inertia about okay of the body about its center of mass is uh, m k squared. Okay. So mass m radius r. Uh, wait, m k square. Why is this k square right there? Why not something? Okay, whatever. If the coefficient of friction between the body and the surface is mu, then oh yeah. So uh, initially spinning about center of mass is gently placed on the rough horizontal surface. So it's it's ha it has no um, no translational motion. It's just rotating, right? So yeah, the contact point is uh, sliding. As seen by the ground, so there's friction, kind of friction effect. Yeah, and the moment of inertia of the body about center of mass is this whatever. Uh, if the coefficient of friction between the body and the surface is mu, then fine, we'll just uh, write some stuff over here. So at any given moment, say it has velocity v. So at any given moment uh, before pure rolling, it has velocity I don't know v, and it has omega, uh, angular velocity, right? So Initially, I mean, let's just assume it was going in this uh, clockwise direction and then the friction was acting uh, in this direction because this point must have been moving like that. So uh, because of that, it gained it gained a uh, velocity in this direction. So what's the acceleration of this guy? Um, well, first of all, if this is uh, before the pure rolling condition, then what must happen is that this this uh, point should be going like that, right? Uh, what that means is that uh, v minus omega r. So this thing is r, of course. So v minus omega r, that must be negative. There we go. So r bigger, sorry. Yeah, so whenever this condition is satisfied, it will uh, be before the pure rolling. And then after some point, it, after a point, it will be pure rolling itself. And then, yeah, it won't accelerate anymore because friction will be zero. Anyway, so before that, what is going to happen? We got this friction right here. Uh, so the torque on this uh, this whatever this body is, uh, that will just be friction times r, and that upon the inertia. So that's going to be well, they gave us the inertia, but uh, in some very weird fashion, whatever. So this upon i. Uh, yes, this and in fact friction, we just know what it is because it's just going to be normal times the coefficient of friction because it's kind of friction, right? So that's just going to be mu mg. So you can just write that over here. So mu mg times r upon i is our uh, angular acceleration. Yes, yeah, and our uh, translation acceleration that's just dv upon dt that is going to be f upon m, which is well, yeah, it's going to be mu g. Cool, right? So now, what do we do with it though? What are they asking? First of all, they are asking the translational work done by the friction. Ah, uh, yeah, so there's a change in the rotating energy as well as there's a change in the translation energy of this body. Uh, so, oh, so we need to figure out how omega changes with uh, v, I guess. So, what will, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, what will the final velocity be? That's what we want to figure out, I guess. Right. Uh huh. So, that's angular excess. I mean, yeah, once you have this, it's not that hard because it's gonna put that over there or something. Yes, so mu, so alpha is just equal to. Does this make sense? I guess it should. Oh wait, friction is in that situation, it should be negative. Sorry. Okay, alpha is equal to so negative mu g. So mu g is just a. So this is going to be negative m a r upon or let's just not go with it because I mean if these are constant, then just uh integrate it directly and then you just have to think, right? So this will be omega minus omega naught, both in clockwise. Is equal to negative mu m g r upon i whatever that times of t. Uh, integrating this guy just get v minus v naught. So v naught is zero. Cool. Just got v is equal to mu g t. And now what we want to figure out is when will you have pure rolling? At what t value will you get pure rolling? And at, at that t value, what is your velocity? Right. Well, yeah. So uh, pure rolling will happen whenever this becomes equal to omega r. So you can just put omega as 
mu g t upon r over there right just putting that in there you get the value of t and from there you can get b and everything um well let's not let's not do that you know right let's not do this instead we will eliminate t right away so just divide these it's gonna be omega naught minus omega upon uh, v is equal to so this just division it's gonna be uh, m r upon i oh, that's weird and what will happen is that v should be omega r uh, for pure rolling so now you got an equation cool it's gonna be m r squared and all that stuff Ooh, this is weird yeah, you got this r over here and oh this is inertia and that's why okay it, it makes sense right so you can figure out what wait we don't want this we want v not omega uh, what am i doing this is v and uh, instead of writing omega i'll just write as v upon r that will give us the thing i mean in the end we also want omega so might as well just figure out what omega is so there we go solve this this is like omega not minus omega is equal to omega times m r squared upon i which i'll just call to be eta okay so this just tells us that omega times one plus eta is right so omega is equal to omega not upon one plus eta right and yeah, that should make sense okay so from there you can get what v is v is just omega r which is going to be uh, omega not r upon one plus eta what we are looking for is the translation work done so it's going to be half mv squared i mean of course this is moving in this direction and uh oh wait yeah the, the total the total work done by uh the friction is going to be negative but i guess the translation work done is not negative just the rotational work will overpower it in the negative sense right just want half mv squared so half m oh it should be capital m and then this guy squared so omega naught squared r squared upon one plus so now let's just uh, bring the fact that well i is like m k squared so this will be r upon k squared uh-huh yeah so instead of writing eta we can just write r upon k squared yeah i guess this will work i don't know i don't like this ah they should have given some other way of writing this uh inertia but whatever this is it huh yes this is the thing so notice that mu is it's just gone it's not even in the equations or whatever so yeah i mean a transition work done by the friction oh we just had to figure out the sign not the value <laughs> i feel dumb fine so it's going to be positive rotational work done by friction is going to be negative and larger the moment of inertia of body the time required oh yes we want to figure out t value as well so once again just gonna solve this thing uh well you got uh omega right so from here you can just figure out what oh, instead you could use this thing as well so from here you can say okay v is this thing but it's also just mu g times t so mu g and then the time required for uh to attain a uh, pure rolling yes okay so the time is just uh omega not r upon uh mu g times one plus eta now eta is just dependent on the geometry it's not dependent on uh, omega naught and yeah i mean like mu is also independent of omega naught g it's a constant r is also just geometry so it's proportional to omega naught it seems so the larger wait oh, oh you want inertia hmm? you want to find how it's related to inertia okay okay i get it so uh our eta was just uh mr squared upon inertia right so the larger the inertia your uh eta will be smaller and that means your denominator will be larger sorry <laughs> denominator will be smaller your whole value will be larger right ah yes that should be the thing so the larger the inertia larger the t value larger the moment of inertia of the body time required for rolling motion will be larger so c uh s larger the moment of inertia of the body work done by the friction uh yeah well the work done by oh so the total work done huh Ooh, that's going to be different i mean it's going to be negative yes and looking at the translation work done and well i mean in the end it's just this work uh plus the rotational work done which is just a change in half i omega naught squared oh that's 
that's really really bad uh-huh okay we can use this thing instead so the total kinetic energy is just given by half i plus mr squared times omega squared i know so we can just use this directly and yeah what what we are looking for is omega not squared sorry omega yeah omega not squared and omega squared will be negative of the border we are looking for omega squared and omega not squared so that will be this thing okay squared uh oh this is a little good so you got this omega not squared right there and then you got 1 upon 1 plus eta squared minus 1 uh, so the good thing is we need to take mr squared out so this will be mr squared upon 2 right uh, omega not squared as well and then this just becomes well 1 plus eta because right so your I mean, mr squared upon i was uh, eta and that's why yeah you just write this as 1 plus eta minus 1 upon eta oh sorry uh, 1 plus eta minus 1 upon 1 plus eta that makes sense, I guess. Um, yeah. Still going to do the same thing though. Ah, got one plus eta over here, and then over here you got one minus one is cancelled. We just got uh, minus two eta, and uh, minus. Hey, it's going to be negative, of course. We got 2 eta plus eta squared, right? So this is going to be eta times 2 plus eta upon 1 plus eta. Which I'm guessing you can write differently and okay, this is just really bad. Uh, do we know how this behaves with uh, changing eta though? I don't know. This of course can be written as eta plus... Um, wow, this is very weird. How did this turn out to be the thing? Okay, and then you got plus one plus eta over there, which uh, cancels, and yeah, I mean, okay. And another thing, which is one upon this plus so eta upon one plus eta. Yes. Now think about it. As your uh, moment of inertia increases, your eta value decreases. And what is this, by the way? It's just the negative work done, right? I mean, proportional to that. So your eta decreases, but then this whole quantity is just one upon. Um, inertia upon mr squared so the, the reciprocal and then plus one right so as your inertia increases this quantity just uh this denominator increases so this whole quantity just decreases so your eta decreases as well as this eta upon one plus eta decreases what that means is yeah larger moment of inertia uh the work demand of friction will be smaller of course it's going to be negative but hey yeah so we could say d uh, r and d p as well Right? So now we are ready to answer this. So, first question. A goes to, so translational development by the friction. It says, this is a uh, positive, of course. And then, uh, rotational work done by the friction is negative. There we go, P. Large moment of inertia of the body time required for the uh, rolling motion that will be greater, right? So S and then D goes to R, yes. But at the same time, you can also say it's going to be P because uh, negative work done is, uh, is there, right? Yeah. Second, I mean, friction always does negative work. Suppose a force F is applied to the topmost point of a rigid body of radius R and mass M. Uh, where? Topmost point of this. Oh, yeah, so I've seen this question actually, I think. Oh, okay, it depends on the inertia as well. Ah, yeah. Kind of does depend on the inertia. Yeah. So, okay. Top of point of electric body. Is... Fine, fine, fine. The force of friction will be zero for... Uh... Oh, yeah, so we need to do it. <laughs> we need to actually calculate the thing. So, first of all, what's the angular acceleration? I mean, okay, let's just write down the equations right away. So, whatever force is there... And let's just say I is the inertia about the center of mass. So, yeah. F times R, that's the torque. Uh huh. Uh, upon I plus MR squared, that will be the torque. So it should be 2FR because actually it's going to be F times 2R, right? You see, because this complete distance. So F times 2R, and then that upon I plus MR squared, 
right that is the angular acceleration so about this uh, contact point and it is the same angular acceleration about the center of mass as well because come on it's a rigid body so it's going to be f times r upon oh uh, minus friction actually plus friction is uh let's just write a sign convention let's just say that uh, the direction to the right is going to be positive so this will be like fr minus fr so this is this small f is for the friction force okay not acceleration or anything and this upon uh the inertia right yeah that should do it so this thing is uh what yeah uh, this is our angular acceleration for all but all we really care about is the friction force so the sign of that anyway cancel out these r's yep and what it else is like okay f is equal to capital f minus 2i f upon i plus mr squared uh which will be so we got capital f common and so we i plus mr squared minus 2i so it's going to be mr squared minus i hey i've seen this kind of uh expression somewhere but I remember where i have seen. oh yeah so i recently did a derivation about uh i mean it was a very simple system you just had this rod hinged at one end and you were hitting it with a particle and something and yeah okay let's not go into that but it was similar to this thing right that was uh fine let's just uh, okay what we were doing is uh we were trying to figure out the sign of this thing. So of course, as inertia, let's just say inertia upon m r squared is uh, eta. So this will be f, or you could say the opposite thing, but whatever. I just want to say it's like one minus eta upon one plus eta. So in this case, eta is a quantity less than one. Uh, in the previous question, it was quantity bigger than one or something. Okay. So what we're looking for is where did it go? Yeah. Uh, so when will this be zero that will be when eta is equal to one so for a ring this will be zero so a r okay force of friction will, will be forward so uh i mean yeah we just according to sign convention the positive direction is the right direction and which is also the forward direction of course and so they just are asking when will this be this point be positive that is when eta will be less than one so uh for a solid sphere it's going i mean eta is going to be two fifth which makes sense yes it's perfect oh what is this zero okay i think that's some others okay whatever uh ring no so it's gonna be p most likely okay c force of friction will, will be backward uh-huh so for that to happen your eta must be bigger than uh one but i mean if all of this is confined in uh yeah the thing is so if i think about it i just just think about like you have you got this body or whatever okay it's, it looks uh circular from this view so you got this body i don't know it changes the mass density whatever <laughs> thing is you can uh, have a cylinder around it so cylinder going like this it's towards us okay right so we are seeing it's a uh, cross section right and then this is the axis about which you want the inertia so of course it's going to be summation of m i r squared but then each of these r squared quantities is less than capital r squared right less than or equal to because for a ring it will be equal but then uh, for any other body so like a sphere a cylinder whatever it's going to be less than capital r squared and what that means is that inertia will be less than summation of m i capital r squared which is the same thing as capital m times capital r squared so yeah let's just write it down so inertia is equal to summation of m i uh, r i squared right so r i is just, is just the distance from this axis not from the center of mass but from the axis okay this thing is less than or equal to summation of m i capital r squared then that's just equal to capital M times R squared, and that's it. That just means like this inertia, okay, it's supposed to be less than or equal to it. Right? Yeah, yeah. So this can never be bigger than one. So this can never be backward, which, yeah, I mean, it's weird. What that means is like whenever you have this force, so if you have a spindle or something, which is, which, uh, yeah, uh, you have a thread going like that, and then it, it's 
thread is being pulled, then the friction will always be positive. It can never be negative. So you can just, hmm, this is a nice result. Anyway, so C. So this will be backward for nobody. <laughs> nobody, <laughs> whatever. Okay, T. If A is equal to R alpha T2 force itself, then force of friction, A is equal to R alpha. Oh, okay, so it's like pure rolling, huh? Due to the force itself. So then there's no need for friction, it will be zero because it's doing pure rolling by itself. There we go, you got our you got our answer now. And this was nice. Still, it would have been better if they had more questions in this thing because I mean somebody recommended me to solve this for the exercise, but then maybe he just mistyped it and he meant some other exercise like the fifth exercise or something. But whatever. All right, next. So third, a rigid body of mass M radius R rolling without slipping on on the inclined plane. Uh, then the magnet force of friction. Okay. The, okay, so it's just the normal convention, conventional symbols and everything, right? Okay. Oh, so for different things, you have different. Uh, okay, okay, I understand. So for any inertia, that's, that's what you know. So rolling with, without slipping on the inclined plane and the magnet of force of friction. Mm -hmm. So you just got this. Wait a second, how can it not accelerate though? Uh, Oh, okay, so yeah, I mean it can accelerate and still roll, right? It can happen. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not uh, uniform rolling, but it is rolling in the end. So for that, all you really need to do is just A is equal to alpha R, right? Wait, what? Oh yeah, so uh, the D option of second question was different. So A equal to alpha R due to the force itself. So if, if the friction was upset, it would still roll. That's what we were saying. In this question, it's different. There is friction and A is equal to alpha. Fine. Uh, that's one equation we know. And then of course, alpha is pretty easy to figure out. And A is, so A upon R, which is also alpha actually. Hmm. We can do that as well. Right. I mean, the, the usual stuff, right? Oh, uh, and there's this force acting on it. So for the center of mass, you got this mg sine theta force right ah we got mg cosine theta like this and whatever so what was the okay this equation will be different i guess and you can just uh, just do this thing so it's got mg sine theta times r upon the inertia about the center of mass sorry uh, no not the center of mass about this contact point inertia plus mr squared Yes, uh, that will be equal to, so once again, angular acceleration equal to angular acceleration or whatever. In fact, this equation, instead of writing it like that, I'll just, yeah, write alpha about center of mass is equal to alpha about contact point. Anyway, that's the equation that we'll be using. Okay, so mg sine theta r upon i plus mr squared, that is equal to, uh, so about the center of mass, this will just be, mg is i mean okay that's about the center of mass i mean that force is having zero torque and then it's just friction which will say is going in this direction or whatever so then this is going to be well anti-clockwise so you can just say or in fact no let's just uh, for this once let's say friction is in this direction so we f times r upon i yeah that should do it so you can figure out the friction well okay so this is saying that the friction will always be positive because yeah Huh. Anyway, the thing is, F is equal to I upon I plus MR squared. And then you got that times of MG sine theta, right? Okay. So everywhere you have this MG sine theta and then you have something in the reciprocal, huh? So really what we're looking for is MG sine theta upon 1 plus MR squared upon I, which shall say is like theta or let's not do that let's say it's one upon eta so here eta will be i upon m also. anyway the thing is so for a ring this eta will be one 
and then it will just become mg sin theta upon 2. So a goes to s d for a solid sphere eta will be 2 fifths so this will be like 1 plus 5 upon 2 so 1 plus 2.5 so only 3.5 uh-huh that just goes to r c for us for what a solid cylinder eta is just going to be mr squared upon 2 upon mr squared like, yeah 1 upon 2 so this will just become mg sin theta upon 3 so that's gonna be q and then the last one is of course the other thing so hollow sphere so it's gonna be two third mr squared that's inertia about center of mass so yeah one plus three upon two is gonna be one like 2.5 so mg sin theta upon 2.5 which is t there we go so yes that's the answer third done so fourth i don't know how much time i'm taking but hey i've not done this for a long time so yeah it's okay to be slow a sphere is rolling without slipping with a velocity v on the horizontal surface okay rolling without slipping velocity v horizontal surface uh-huh velocity oh come on are you serious what kind of question is this velocity of lowest point is gonna be zero wow i mean the absolute velocity as seen by the ground frame i mean i shouldn't ever say absolute velocity but then when i usually say absolute velocity i mean in the ground frame or in the space frame right uh in the end there's no such thing as absolute velocity but yeah so a uh it's going to be q velocity of leftmost point okay so you got this whatever this thing is sphere whatever whatever this might be if it's yeah if you know the distance it works right it's got velocity like that uh and you got omega which is just v upon r right and this thing is r as well so it's got i mean the relative velocity would be v in that direction but actually in the ground frame it's gonna be like that so it's got v square root 2 as the velocity the magnitude of the velocity so p this was easy okay c huh, this is not okay whatever velocity of highest point uh, is gonna be 2v this is very well known and d velocity at center sorry v what r so this was easy i really think he meant exercise five or something yeah it's not supposed to be exercise four i guess because this is just too short why would he ever recommend me this and hmm, what's interesting well yeah maybe anyway so this is it exercise four and see you guys in the next video and yes, I am not an exercise 3. I am not planning to do that because come on. I mean, I already got some good questions in a lot of booklet. It's not booklet, it's a whole book. So uh, the rotational mechanics section of that book, I had some good questions there. So I'm not going to do it anymore. This ends here. I mean, if you want me to do it, I could go with 5 pitch. I mean, from the looks of it, it looks pretty interesting, right? So I could do it if you ask me to. Oh, oh, oh that's that's like good questions so you got. Moment of inertia about axis of uniform thin plate of density something I showed it. So it's got it's like a parabola and then you want to figure out the moment of inertia of that guy. So it's a uniform thin plate, huh? Oh, I for some reason I thought this would be the rotation about this axis and that would be a whole solid. But then if it's just a two-dimensional figure, then it's just really really easy. Yeah. Hmm. Moreover about the x-axis, so that, <laughs> uh huh, yeah. I mean, you can just break it into two sections, so this one section and that one section, and then integrate. So, for each each strip, you can figure out the moment of inertia by ml ml squared upon three, right? And then just integrate whatever. So, hmm. I mean, it looks interesting. I could do this. And it's got a lot of questions as well, so yeah. Oh, hey, I've seen this question once. Kind of energy of a tracker, tractor, crawler, belt of mass m if the tractor moves with velocity v and uh huh. Oh, yeah, so the thing is like this you have to break it into four sections. So you got this upper section moving with velocity 2v, this lower section moving with velocity 0, and then you got this like these two belts which are moving with variable velocity so you can combine these two 
to form a single i don't know circular uh belt thing whatever which is basically just doing pure rolling right and then find out the uh, energy of that thing which yes you can do that of course yeah so this is awesome i mean i can do this thing for sure right uh yeah oh yeah i mean i just realized that i never actually attempted the whole booklet seriously but anyway i i don't need to now because i'm good enough with, uh, with it right now okay so i'll see you guys in the next video